Hey everybody, what's up? So, Rooster Teeth did some things correctly and didn't do the things they thought they were going to do. So, that's a good thing. But, I am here with Summer. We got Salem back. Couldn't be here last weekend. We got her in this time. So, we're going to talk about how this episode did not simultaneously kind of went how I thought it was going to and didn't <laughs> at all. I don't know how to describe it. It was really weird. This is not the episode I was expecting. I was expecting volume three levels of fat hitting of shat hitting the fan. <laughs> but we didn't get it. I was really, really shocked. Um Salem, you go ahead first. Um, I was kind of expecting the same. In one retrospect, I was kind of happy that we had this episode because we learned a lot from it, but at the same time, we we learned something very scary that kind of added more death likes that we already had present for certain people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's putting it very lightly. Yeah, that's me, that's me being nice about it. Or, I mean, I could be cackling in the background all the way at an unseen castle surrounded by Grimm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Are there any specific <laughs> things that you want to speak about before we get into it, or...? Um, well, prior to streaming, and I'm not going to read it, but I actually went through and enlarged the, I took a screen cap of that Tyrion's about redacted now. files. And I typed it out completely into words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. that was a little nuts. If I remember, I'll, oh, I don't know if I should do that. If I remember, I'll put it in the, uh, comments under this video on the YouTube channel, if I remember. It, Again, it's if it's I remember. okay. There's, there's a lot. Oh my God. Yeah. But that, that was one thing that I'm noticing. Pretty much, I don't know if Hazel has this, but basically everyone outside of Cinder, Mercury, and Emerald that helps Salem is considered to be dead or gone to the rest of the world. I didn't think about that detail. She's using people that people don't think exist. It's the best kind of people to have. Yeah, because so far we have Tarion and Watts that are both confirmed, that were thought to be gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm waiting on something from Hazel that supposedly he's supposedly dead to or disappeared, but Either way, it's a good cover. You're using people that are considered to be dead. But uh, anything else before we go on to uh, summer? Um, aside from aside from feels about Penny and her having kind of the the reaction like on television where she that was very similar to Yang from the Vital Festival. Uh huh. Oh, don't worry. In mine, I will get into Pietro, and you guys might you might see me cry fly on this stream. I'm not kidding. Uh, I mean, but, uh, if we, I can cry right now if we want to talk about Pietro right now. We'll we'll get, we'll get to that. I yeah, I need I to get into that, but summer. I, I figure I'd save that for that. Yeah, <laughs> summer, go ahead. All right, for my little highlights, uh, Penny has robot friends. She does. <laughs> yep, that was awesome. Um, I don't I don't want to get into this just yet because I'm sure we'll get into it later. I do like that we're seeing all these different viewpoints of the characters, though. So, that they all have their own thoughts and opinions going on. Mm -hmm. I, I love that, too. Crow is in the comments. Can I do this? Will that work? Oh, I can actually show the comments <laughs> in here! Nice! That's awesome! <laughs> That's amazing! Lose connection? What? What's up? Crow's not. <laughs> Crow's not wrong. I said I think we lost connection, or I lost connection. I can hear you. I oh. I can hear you too. Oh, that I was. Can hear you. I was just amazed at the fact that I can show these now. They showed that as a thing when. I'm sorry. I really like this application. That they added that as a feature recently, and I didn't know how to do it, and I just figured it out then. But anyway, keep going. I'm I'm clapping for you. Um, and then my other. I was Robin's group has some amazing semblances. Yeah, they they do, they really that, do. That are specifically good for robbing things. 
Oh yeah, especially. Little but those hashtags. Hashtags. Bag. Ha- hashtag Fiona is a bag of holding. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That might be the most ridiculous <laughs> okay. semblance we've seen. <laughs> it's just like what? Um uh and Could you just I, imagine like the practical use of that? Not even like as a husband. <laughs> That's just like I'm. I'm what and what is scaring me is I'm wondering if we have the roguelike, and I mean X Men, not roguelike like as in video. Yeah. The roguelike first time that that semblance activates, if she's hugging a relative oh and she randomly sucks them oh. into her hand. Oh god! <laughs> Where's I mean, grandma? <laughs> I'm just like. That, that is a, I, I keep saying this, that is a Ruby Chibi skit waiting to happen. Like she can't, like her semblance malfunctions and she can't touch a thing because otherwise it's just going to black hole upon itself. But that was, he's going to be in here all night because he knows I can do this now. He's not going to stop. <laughs> good for Robin things. <laughs> I, I hate him. I hate him. I, I uh, love that. Ah, oh, no, I hate him. I love the comments. I hate him. <laughs> but uh, we're, so this is an episode I shockingly really wanted. We're going to get into something really personal right away that I don't know if anybody on this page knows about. Admin Crow might, but I don't talk about it much. I have a very stern relationship with my father. I'm going to start crying. Um, and it is a weak point for me when I see either good examples of fathers or or you see a surrogate father stepping in, which technically mm-hmm. Pedro's kind of both. But we were always under the understanding that Penny was her own aura. Not the case. Technically, she's Pietro's. And I was always wondering why he was so sick. Why at Maria's age, she was better off in health than Pietro was. And then you find out well, that... Pe- and then you find out that Pietro's literally giving parts of his soul away for his daughter. Yeah. He might be my favorite character that Ruby's ever come up with. I don't know what, what's going to top that, that. That he's automatically and will ever be the best dad Ruby has ever come up with. I I about lost it. I had to stop watching it at work because I started crying. Oh, it was. And with this will call back to a prediction that I have later on where – I, I'm going to go canatonic because I'm going to ball of tears if what I think is going to happen is going to happen because I think it's going to happen, but we'll get to that in predictions. Mm-hmm. But um, let's get back to somewhat happier thoughts. Um, yet again, set up for big old brawl at the end of last week's episode just didn't happen. I'm very okay with cliffhangers, but if they give us a third, crap's about to go down, and then it's and then it didn't. I'm going to be really irritated. Because, like, don't set it up if you're not going to do it. Give or take, this dinner could be a lot more volatile than fighting that Grim was. But. <laughs> whichever. I mean, look, this is how people have dinner in Atlas. They just beat each other up. And they we do. finally see Mamashni. Uh, that is the thing I am most excited about. It, I like really badly want to see it. They just get the. To... I'm sorry. Now I'm thinking about Ruby and the Purge. Oh Lord! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yes, girl. I-, I swear on my soul, if they do, I will be flying to Austin. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, wow, I was gonna get into this. I have a freaking mile and a half of notes here. Crow. Speaking of which, guessed correctly in a fan theory or his own theory that. <laughs> With no clues to it, that Ironwood's semblance was that he was a lie detector. He's not. <laughs> Robin is. I, that was my first thought. That was just like, are you freaking kidding me? He 
got that off the off the handle, not even trying. Mm -hmm. He just guessed it for the wrong person. Um, okay, interesting thing. Do, 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 do. Staff of creation. Well, okay, he said it wasn't his theory, but still, he said it. Staff of creation is what's keeping up Atlas. Meaning Atlas That's is crazy. gonna fall, right? Yep. That was gonna be my other prediction. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. <laughs> That thing's gonna get ripped out and that thing gonna fall. But, um, and it can only be used for one thing at a time. I really like the insanely strict sets of rules on these, um, on these artifacts. That mm -hmm. one especially. It can only be used for one thing at once. That's nuts. But, uh, you know, I have to do, and I have to, and I have to give them credit right away. They did the thing that I hope they were going to do. They are checking Penny's audio visual recordings. If they didn't mm -hmm. do that, I was going to be really pissed off. But they did, so I'm very happy. Um, I found it kind of odd that Crow didn't mention that he almost got killed by Tyrion, unless that conversation just happened to happen off screen. Um, or they're saving no, it for when it's going to be relevant. About it. Yeah. Um, going back to Pietro. Pietro uh, won out against everybody else for their defense projects. I'm going to guess, I don't know what anybody else's is because we haven't heard anything about anybody else, but I'm going to guess that Watts's, depending on what he specialized in, was extreme, extreme, like, what do I want to say? Violation, unethical. Of, unethical, like violation of amendments type stuff. Because why he's tacked into everything, looking over everyone, something like that. I don't know. I really hope we get a flashback scene of that going to crap. That to me would be really good. Um... Also, I get what they were going for, but everyone and their mother knew there was going to be Watts in that photo. <laughs> like, come on. He's like, oh, it was us. No. Was no. no. I was right. Exactly. <laughs> that that would have been fun though if it was us. <laughs> It was it's like Ospin, Ospin or like the shopkeep. Like one of those two <laughs> would have been like. Are you kidding me? But it, if it was a shop, I, I would have lost my mind. <laughs> I, yeah, is it bad? I want to see different memes where people Photoshop different faces over Watts. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you, it's getting done right now. With how much they've been using the freaking Bumblebee selfie thing, it's gonna happen. I can tell you that right now. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, do, 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 new semblances, the upcoming dinner. One thing that I appreciated also, mm -hmm. despite the fact how many people want to show that they haven't had any chemistry before volume six because they're mentally challenged, <laughs> Blake not being able to process that she actually has someone that will hear out her thoughts mm -hmm. is great. <laughs> that is so important. It is. Crow has an idea of who he thought was in the photo. Ah, yes! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because Tuxin was my very first favorite minor character that was introduced, and then... And then... <laughs> Insta was he the first on-screen murder in Ruby? Yeah, he was... Well, well I mean, te not, technically off-screen, but... Was he, the first? he was killed off-screen, but very first murder that we got, technically yeah. speaking. That's what I thought, because it was the first... Because that was the start of Volume 2, right? Yeah, it was the first started. episode, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He yeah. he had Tuxin. He hadn't seen die yet. Yeah. Um, that, that was why I liked him, because he had a bookstore. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a catchphrase. It's false advertising. That's one of my plus, favorite lines ever. Plus, but, like a big cat or something. Oh, yeah. Where they bring back that Puma like line Puma? from uh, RVB. From Red vs. Blue. Red vs. Blue. Um... <laughs> It's going to go on other things like them actually communicating. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, like you said, of like sparse views. Like we're going back again mm -hmm. with Ren is very, very much for Ironwood. Ruby and Nora aren't. Yang and Blake are very much towards Robin. Clover is very much towards whatever Crow wants to do. I, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. um, uh, <laughs> Um, 
And one other thing I want to mention to see if mm -hmm. this is just me. Nora has always been, again, I cannot even begin to describe how much more I like Nora every second more she's on screen. But Nora has always been like, let's help. Mm -hmm. Let's do whatever. But to the level of just how irritated Nora is at how specifically just Mantle is being treated is really starting to put some credence to the whole her grandma is sitting in that bed. Because <laughs> I'm just waiting. We're supposed to learn about her family oh, and where she's from. So vocal. And where she's from. Why is she getting so unbelievably pissed about how Mantle's being treated if she doesn't have personal stake in it? She got mad about everything else, but she's getting borderline, like, livid about Mantle. <laughs> I have a theory. Yeah, because she straight out said things to Ironwood. Yeah. No, she did. And and I was kind of surprised at first, but then after like rewatching it, um someone a, in a different spoiler chat that I'm a part of that is not affiliated with a page. Um, <laughs> they took a screenshot of the two that were hiding behind the trash can and mantle. Mm -hmm. And somebody already made a post saying I, what if it's possible that Nora was originally in Mantle before ending up where she did in... Yeah. In no. Which I think I said something similar in the first episode because <laughs> how she... Like, so her comment about how uh, if you're the one looking up at Atlas, you have a completely different viewpoint. Exactly. That seems so personal. It does. And... We have no clue of how, like, how old do we think she was when Ren found her? Six, seven? Yeah, six or seven, probably. And again, this is just me feeding facts. I don't personally believe this, but good lord, would I be happy if this happens. The Winter Maiden has mistral architecture and all this stuff spattered all over her room. Her mm -hmm. freaking name's Freya, <laughs> for crying out loud. And she didn't have to go anywhere. She could have stayed in Atlas. Her kids could have moved away to Mistral, and that's how Nora ended up there. They could have went there to get better living conditions for Nora. Therefore, that's why she's that pissed off about it. It really starts to add up when you think about it. The more it's... I was just like, that'd be cool. Now I'm like... Mm -hmm. My head is no. going. While we're talking about conspiracy theories, let me tell you my thought because, <laughs> oh my, ah crow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, so my thought was, what if there's something that they're doing in Mantle that nobody <laughs> knows yet, and that thought is, what if they are actually paying the citizens of Mantle? to move to Mistral. To hit, and they are doing this to hinder overpopulation. It could be. Like I said, it's a little far-fetched. I can see that. <laughs> and what made me think of that was when you compare the conditions of Mantle versus how it is in Atlas, the only way you're going to move up to Atlas is if you're incredibly smart. Yeah. Or money. Or rich. Yep. That is true. Uh, Which is what brings my first idea back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, that. And, and I could be wrong. It might be something that we won't see until a later point, but that's the only thought that comes to mind. Yeah, it, it was either for overpopulation or just her parents wanted better living conditions. It's, it's one of the two because they're not just randomly, we're going to move away from our family. Mm -hmm. Most people don't just do that. Some do for a fresh start, whatever. But um, I had a thought just now. What if, what if the reason there's all this mistral pictures, architecture and so on and so forth in the background is what if Freya was originally from mistral? And she became the maiden kind of by accident while her and her family were visiting Atlas. 
That very well could be. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading Crow's comment. <laughs> I know. For everyone who does not know, I'm wearing the freaking drill pendant, and Crow had to add in something about it. You can also see the Gurren custom print that I have right there. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is, yeah. I don't think it fully shows, though. Does it? Uh, anti spirals chat. No, he got all of it. Okay. Oh, you're right. But, no, it's not. Don't worry. When a million apes rule the Earth, they will come back. Um... That also, there's also another moon theory. It's getting close, but we're not going to talk about that stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's weird. But uh, another thing that before we get into the theory that's literally going to kill me as a human being, Ironwood is very okay with children telling him that he's wrong. Or it could be specific to a very certain child who happens to have the soul of his old boss in him. Same. I'm talking about Nora. Oh, yeah. That's, um, I also kind of saw that as fire <laughs> breaking point. Yeah. Because when we see the moment where he's staring at the entire room and then he sits down and then just puts his ha- his face in his hands. Mm-hmm. He's like this close to snapping, guys. Oh, I know he is. When he screamed at everyone, like he has no options left. And you can tell, like, they showed the, like, PTSD-like attack he had of the freaking Rook emblem showing up on the, uh, of him seeing his old battleship monitor there. Yeah. And, you imagine if that happened in the middle of Atlas. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. Um. I really yeah, got he's still else. bothered by that too. He still is. He's Poor man. To, he's going to be for forever. But um, all right. So uh, real, real quick, while we're talking briefly about that, the thing that I thought was interesting was him making the comment about humanity and how that's the advantage Salem has is because she no yeah. longer lacks humanity. This yeah. is interesting because of the fact that he's got cybernetic limbs. So then the question becomes, how far is he willing to sell his humanity to try to go and beat Salem? Well, there's that's an interesting thing to it. But it, I think it was just getting more towards the fact that he's... I mean, he, he is half robot. He is half robot. But that's got to double meaning to it. But I think it was more leaning towards, like, she doesn't have to care if people die. Mm-hmm. He can't just send people out. The last time he tried sending things out to die, they ended up getting turned against him and then killing people that he cared about because he could send out drones. They could be replaced. And then Order 66 happened and... But, uh... Sorry, my light burned out. (laughs) Look, he's the Tin Man. He hasn't gotten his heart yet. I got to write down a time stamp because I heard something come through. It, it was about roughly the 23, 20 mark, give that's, or take. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Okay, so let's get into what's going to kill me here. They went, they went very out of their way. Oh, God, I'm going to cry. They went very out of their way to show that Pietro is borderline dying because of his not having an aura and living in the middle of their version of Antarctica, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And he basically is terrified that they're going to shut Penny down or force him to. And Ruby brings up, hey, no big deal, pal. Watch just reactivate her. And then he goes out of his way to say that pretty much he can't. If he needs to again, he'd die. So, either forcefully or how I want it to happen is voluntarily, she gets shut down. There's going to be shit that goes down, and they have no reinforcements, nothing. One of them's going to need help. You're going to see Pietro dead on the floor and a hole through the roof of Penny going wherever she needs to go and royally wrecking the living hell out of, what, out of whatever made her dad give her life to give her purpose again. 
And so why'd you have to break my heart? It's see, see, I agree with this. Now I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you, you will, you guys live in different states than me. If this happens, you will hear a sonic boom come from <laughs> my household of me screaming for Penny to go murder. <laughs> if this happens, you have no idea. <sighs> oh. no. Um, I, I actually want a little bit of further evidence to potentially support this idea if we really want to get technical about it. Chibi sometimes foreshadows actual Ruby. What's that? Chip Ruby Chibi actually yeah. foreshadows it. And since we had that one instance, which I initially thought was the foreshadowing <laughs> of Levi the Leviathan Grim. Okay. Where Ruby's supposed to use her silver eyes but then doesn't, but in Chibi and he ends up saving the day, that could be the foreshadowing for Volume 7 rather than what it was for Volume 6. If. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I did. That could be. That would be cool. And, yeah, that would be cool. But either way, it's Rooster Teeth. I don't need a paycheck. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Put I my mean, name as a credited idea guy. <laughs> That's all I need. And throw Neil in there somewhere. That'd be perfectly fine. But anyway, um, <laughs> the other theory, which we're going to get into, which is pretty plain and simple. Mm -hmm. They had to go out of their way to show that this city that is probably weighs about 15 billion tons. That is just sitting above all the nice citizens as one stick holding it up. <laughs> And if the stick goes bye-bye, everybody goes flat. <laughs> so there's going to be a time, which is where I think it's going to happen. We're going to have literally Sokovia above these people. And they're not going to be able to get to everyone in time. And Penny's going to go on high alert mode, getting people out of the city. And they're not going to trust her at first. And then she's going to start saving people. And they're going to restore a little bit of balance to get Grim off, maybe. Showing that they're not scared anymore. Because the person who they thought was their enemy is actually helping them. Again, Rooster Team, you don't gotta pay me. All I want is a credit. <laughs> so you want credit and why you're breaking everyone's hearts and making them sad? You yep. know what? The sadness will last about <laughs> that long. And then it will turn into raucous cheering. I mean, I'm very I'm okay sure with that. Still sad about Pira. I still am. But this is basically that level of sadness in reverse. In reverse. <laughs> Pretty much. I know how bad it is. I personally made a, an AMV just to show how heartbroken I was that Pura died. It, that's, that's not bad. You're good. <laughs> ah, but uh, anyway, I don't have any crazy Tumblr theories because I just <laughs> came up with that one. <laughs> that one's me. So... What about you guys? What are some other things other than the two very obvious ones that we had to cover? So one of the things that I said upon looking at the photographed image of Watts and Pietro, like in their younger years, um, the thing that I thought was interesting was all of the scientists are all wearing different colors and all five of those colors are representative of Voltron. <laughs> Because and, and it's and I know it doesn't actually reflect real personalities because Watts is wearing a yellow tur turtleneck and he is not Hunk. He's not the laughable comic relief that he that Hunk is depicted because Watts is, is a very serious guy. But it's still like one of those things where I saw that and I was like, huh, that's kind of funny. I, I love how I can get people's childhoods or like cartoons differences down to exact tastes because. Everyone else went Voltron, and my brain went Power Rangers. Okay, I <laughs> that too. Power Rangers. Power Rangers. I, I grew up with Power Rangers too. Which, if we really want to think about it, that works because Penny can represent the pink. Um, and she can. She can. Um, but aside from that, 
I kind of get the feeling that Weiss is connecting the dots in regards to... Oh, yeah, the sewer facility. I forgot about that part, the sewer The lines. sewer facility and heat ventilation or whatever it was. They're ran um, by a sneeze. Oh, yeah, she's connected <laughs> up. Ran by a sneeze. <laughs> I'm leaving. <sighs> Wasn't that a Weiss one, guys? Okay, now I'm leaving. <laughs> so the stream is ending. God, damn it. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, anyway, someone um, else walked off screen for once and not me. I have a limit. I think what would be interesting is if we do get the dinner scene, because I was speculating, Winter says we have been invited to dinner. I want to know who does that we categorize? Obviously, Ironwood's going because the invitation's for him. Um, <coughs> I almost... Obviously feeling winter. that winter's obviously gonna go I think and it's ironwood winter and penny and then everybody will probably just go but i think it's mainly those three i, I think know. weiss weiss is gonna I'm be sure weiss is probably go. also because they're yeah weiss will probably go because winter's going but i think initially the invite was that mm -hmm. yeah well, yeah but i do not doubt and i hope they don't where we get to address the fact that Weiss goes and everyone else is like, we're going with you. And we get to have the scene of Jacques being an absolute jag bag because a faunus steps in his household. <laughs> yes. Wait, so. wait, 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 wait. Here's, a, here's an another thought. Oh, Lord. Do you think the Aesops are going to join them because they're Ironwood's personal... Mm -hmm. I personally because, think it's because, either going to be Team Ruby and Juniper or them. I don't think we're going to have like 16 people there. It would be funny if we did have both because then it would be two Faunus <laughs> stepping into his house. True. Uh, yeah, I guess, but it, I, I think it, we're going to get one of them. I think it's only <laughs> going to be one. But Yeah. I'm, I don't think it'll be that many people. No. I'm mm -hmm. just excited to hopefully see Klein. Because hey, I want to see him. Because he dropped off the face of the earth. He's not even in the Schnee Manor rolling credit shot. I he got fired. I bet he did. I hope he didn't get fired. Like my brother, that he got the Schnee Manor. Yeah, I don't know. Part of me thinks he got fired, and I was, I was so scared. I was so scared that we were seeing homeless people in Atlas. I was so <laughs> scared that we were going to see Klein. I was so scared. But anyway, um, what else? Uh, so I do want to say this. You keep wanting to say it every week, and I forget to say it every week. But because you were talking about the Aether, and I was really thinking about when he was talking to Weiss and Ruby. My lord. The effort of animation this season is great because his characters are like not just standing and talking, they're doing things like he's taking his glasses off and cleaning them. Yeah. Characters are actually moving in the background. Yep. That they, they they've taken all the criticisms and they're realizing the little things and they're taking their time. And according mm -hmm. to them, they're even ahead on episodes with doing all this extra stuff. So yep. it's nice to have it's little like touches. The smallest little things, it's just so nice. Like, even di differences, like, Winter pacing back and forth. You can see her shoulders moving mm -hmm. up, and she's, like, tense about the whole idea. And, and she's sad now, so she's got, like, like, nothing going on in her. Yep. And, like, yep. and little useless things, like, they're inside the Atlas artifact vault, and there's just random particle effects of, like, rocks just floating. <laughs> they don't need to be. <laughs> But they can they be. I, they I thought that was interesting. Like, yeah. just the inside of the vault when you compare it to the vault from Haven Academy. Because um, Haven had more of the, the they're garden. Matchi they're matching their maidens. They are. And I'm assuming that the rocks are supposed to be either representative of ice or... Like stalactites, what? stuff like that. Yeah. Or, or snow, like, falling briefly and moving in the background. Yeah. Either or. So then... Uh, wait. 
So the which, fall, which it, which brings up the following thing, because on the inside of the vault for the relic of knowledge, we had a desert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think's going to be on the inside of creation <sighs> where the relic actually is? That was the part that I didn't get, and the only thing that I'm thinking is that we got a desert because it's Aladdin. Mm -hmm. That's part of what I think it is. So I would, part of me thinks it's just going to be like a nebulous void and it's just there and you have to walk in. And then I don't know if like, you're going to be tested to see like what you're going to create, like your thoughts of what you're going to create and you're going to like pop in and you'll see them. Like, I don't know, but I still don't understand. No, Never mind. That's not something we don't want to bring up, but we'll see mm-hmm. it. They're very different. And like Ospin built them certain ways to do certain things. So yeah. And before we got to get in there, like I said, we have to get a winter maiden to open the freaking thing. I also like how, if I was looking at that picture correctly, like there's no steps to get to that door. Yeah. It's just up there. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you can't open it unless you're a maiden. And we've noticed unless you're a robot or a fuss with wings or got amazing hops, no one flies in Ruby outside of maidens. So there, you can't open it unless you're a maiden and you can't get to it unless you're a maiden or below listed qualifications. So. What if you have to use your maiden powers in order to get to the vault and this is how it's supposed to be done ideally? I guess it, I guess makes it could me, be, but that just makes me think, why didn't he do that at um, Mistral? At then? Haven. Or Haven, Haven yeah. yeah. And, and that's a fair point, too. I don't know. Um, the only thing that I just thought of was at in the second episode, we have Winter who says the Maiden is secure and in stable condition. And Penny is the one who says that everything is fine with the vault and nothing is wrong with it. Penny's the only one who can actually fly to look at the thing to make sure that the vault's okay. Oh yeah. She's the only one that can really check the door, I guess. Mm -hmm. Unless there's like a hidden button to eject stairs to go up to it, which there very well could be because it's a very technology based room, but Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Anything else before we? Yes. I think it. I'm happy that we finally got this. Os- a little bit of Oscar development. Yeah. It's not much, but I do like it. Yeah, that was. That little kid's growing up fast. My boy. And they're very purposely. Mm-hmm. Like we've shown that Ozpin can come out when he needs to because he helped. Oscar pilot the plane down. Mm -hmm. But he's very well choosing to like their whole worry is that whether or not they should talk or tell James everything because Mm -hmm. and then they're fearing if we don't say anything, we're being like Ospin and the people that Ospin trusted. One of them was James this entire time. Ospin's not trying to tell Oscar to tell him anything. He's not even hinting. He's not taking him over. He's not even like sending a thought his way. Yep. Nothing. That could be taken as two things. He's terrified and doesn't know how to act, or he agrees on how to act. Mm-hmm. But Oscar doesn't, so I'm waiting for a Oscar like begs Ospin for advice kind of thing. Like mentally. I don't know how that worked, but mental conversations. We saw them happen I, before. Yeah, I wouldn't mind some uh more Shane and McCormick in my life, but you know. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, I really don't got anything else. Um, no, that's it. That was like the last thing I wanted to bring up. <laughs> okay. Um, um, do you got some? No. I think we've talked about everything. Okay. Yeah. As far as there I There's just think. a lot to uncover in this episode. Yeah. Before we head out again, if you're seeing this on the YouTube channel or you saw this, you're watching it later on because it'll leave a uh, copy on the Facebook page. We are doing a giveaway. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> she even she even had a Go gift. On. She even had a gift that time. Um, we're doing a giveaway for an a set of autographs from Kara Everly and um, Aaron Zek. All the information is in a pin post on Ruby Remnant's Finest Facebook page. If you want to go in, you could. The ending date is the fifteenth, so you have a month. No one has entered yet. You're not paying a thing. I bought them. I'm shipping them to you. All you got to do is submit it, and then if you win, give me your address. So it's real simple. It's a shipping post. It's a one shot, five thousand words, and the five subjects. Again, I'm a loser, and I did not look them up, and I did not write them down. So if you want to go enter that. Please do. But other than that, Salem, where can everybody find you? Check out the pinned post on the page. Where can they find you? Where can they find me? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm Salem. I just have a presence over the internet. Um, I am Crazy Lady Cosplay on Facebook. If you try to find me on Twitter, it is Sakura Kitsune. But yeah, I'm also Crazy Lady Cosplay on the Instagrams. All right. Summer. Are you still there? Summer. Did we lose you? Summer. Summer. I think we lost her. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's see if this will work. Summer! I'm going to message her. <laughs> we lost you. <laughs> Crap. Oh, me? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> there she She's is. Back. Where can we find you? Where can we find you on the internet? And not a grave. I still think we... I'm already living in a different grave. Um, okay. <laughs> you can find me as Ray Ketchup on Instagram and Facebook. And oh, nice. as Ray the Fanatic on Tumblr, and I don't think I have it on there, but ao3.com. There but is. Yes, no. I write stuff. I. Chaos I fan fiction. No, 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 no. That, that's actually brilliant. And I'm kind of feeling bad that I didn't do something like that. Well, I, I got that idea from Admin Raven a few weeks ago. But I will request for you guys in the future if you do want something and you're able to make it, mm -hmm. I can just throw them up as an editing thing in your spot when we call out next time. Yeah. I can just put them on screen, so. Yeah. Me? I'm actually not that, but I like my little paper. There's my little butterfly. Aw, it's a little butterfly. Oh. And it's me. And of course. It's me. <laughs> you can find me on this yeah, Facebook. Go ahead. Tales fan fiction, so let's get that out of the way. You can find me on this Facebook page, or on this YouTube channel, on the Facebook page, and then pretty much Organoid Zero at everything applicable. I even had to get an Instagram lately because I had to find a link for something, and I hate it. But <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the other part of the webs. Oh, Instagram sucks. I'm sorry for everyone who likes it. I hate it. But I will see you guys all next time. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.